I'm going to talk about repurposing historical photos uh, for use in location-based media. So I think uh, for the past two or three decades, there's been, been spent an awful lot of money digitizing AV archives and collections. And um, some of the problems that this has caused is that uh, the digital copies remains as unused as the paper-based copies, uh, at least when it comes to photography. Of course, we have seen here today with the IAPIKE application, for example, that there are some really innovative and useful ways of uh, approaching this problem. But we have tried to, to look at this challenge and uh, worked with a solution where we have been looking at the affinities between augmented reality, the way I have been working with augmented reality for the past 10 years and developed uh, uh, our own sort of uh, platform or way mode of uh, augmented reality and see this in connection between with uh, re-photography and use some uh, game elements to try to create some engaging uh, uses and applications of uh, historical photos. So in the cross-motion project we have been working on two prototypes, one from the city of Narva here in Estonia and the other one with um, some photos taken by the war photographer Robert Kappa uh, on D-Day on Omaha Beach. So I'm first going to turn to our, the platform that we have been developing over since uh, late 2008. This is not uh, the regular mixed reality AR uh, solution. We do not use uh, a video feed and then put, um, uh, put a 3D graphics layer on top of the video. We decided early on that it might be better to use a full screen for the reconstructed uh, environment, so the re reconstructed world that you want to display, and then let the mixing take place between what or the perspective that you have on the screen and the physical, real perspective that the users have in the real surrounding. So uh, we have been working with several sites in uh, Europe. Uh, you saw just saw something from uh, the forum in Rome. Here's another solution we developed in, uh, on Crete from the ancient Falassana, where we ac actually did use this indirect augmented reality approach to also try to explore mixed reality the way it might be in five or 10 years time when you will have real time 3D and then it will be much easier to add 3D uh, digital information when you have real time 3D representation of the environment that you are positioned in. And this type of augmented reality to have two perspectives, two double descriptions, as Gregor Bateson calls it, uh, actually is a rather old tradition, at least in uh, photography. And we know it at the now and then convention. And this is what happens. Uh, we can, in the application we have, we can uh, take a photo with both the physical and the virtual camera at the same time and create these types of now and then photos. And I think it, it uh, sort of illustrates uh, the benefit of this approach that you can see both perspective and then you can explore what the incremental value will be of the oscillation between these perspectives, between now and between then, and what are the differences and what are the resemblances. So there are many, many types of now and then uh, uses of photo. Uh, and uh, there are, some of them are extremely precise. For instance, the works that done by uh, Mark Klett. Uh, this is from his book on, um, on the earthquake in San Francisco to 1906, where we re-photographed re re maybe about 100 pictures, and they're really scientifically done to get the exact location and use the exact same lens, which creates some stunning effects. 
Others are uh, here, for example, from um, is the Google Street View from um, the Town Hall Square in Narva. And uh, it's pretty easy to find the position sometimes and then add an old photo to see how, what it uh, looked like before. And here you can see how the old Baroque Square actually uh, is now part of the old Baroque Square is today substituted by uh, Soviet-era apartment buildings. So this, uh, we used the IAPIC uh, database, which was extremely useful because of all the uh, positioned images and oriented images, so that we can select a group of images that covered the uh, town hall square. And then we wanted to see how can we, how can we find some engaging ways of using these images as an interface to a reconstruction of the square. Uh, to build the reconstruction, we were so lucky to be allowed to use the models uh, that uh, Fodor at, uh, in Narva has uh, developed over many, many years, a 1 to 100 uh, cardboard model. And um, the University of Tallinn did a lot of uh, uh, photos of the, uh, of the model, and uh, based on that, we managed to get a pretty good uh, photogrammetry model, but this couldn't be used directly because it has a, way too much uh, resolution and uh, noise in, in the models. But my students in, in the course last year used this model based on pho photogrammetry and uh, remodeled, created their own models of the building that was much more optimized for, for the purpose so that it can run smoothly on uh, a mobile device. When thinking about <clears throat> the re-photography tradition, uh, I also come across uh, one of the, some of the writings of uh, Mark Klett, and he says, tells us about the fascination with re-photography and said that for anyone who has made re-photographs, this is the exciting part of the work. Using the print as a guide, the observer moves through the space depicted in the photograph and finds points that are still identifiable from the earlier image. Elsewhere, Klett also describes this uh, process as a kind of quest. So the, here we are, it's really, really a project-driven activity that you really try to find this position and orientation so that the new, the new photo will match the old photo and you can really extract the differences between the two. So thinking about this activity, we tried to find out how we can use game elements. And the activity that uh, Klett is talking about is very much like the hide-and-seek game. And a special version of the hide-and-seek game is the hot-and-cold game. The interesting thing about the hot-and-cold game is that you get feedback. I don't, does anybody know the hot and cold game? Yeah, good. The interesting thing about the hot and cold game is that the person looking for the hidden object gets feedback whether you are approaching the hidden object or are withdrawing from the hidden object. And this is exactly, is exactly what we try to reinvent inside the, as, a, as a feedback inside this uh, application. So we selected photos, six photos of the square, with overlapping images and found the vantage points, the, the, the position of the historical photographer. And then we created the feedback so that you, when you were orienting the device in the right direction, uh, the, the, the buildings that were depicted in the photo will appear as a 3D model. And as you got closer to the vantage point, it got less transparency. Uh, and so on. I'll show you the, this later on. It's difficult to explain and much easier to show. The other game elements that we decided to use and found uh, relevant is from the jigsaw puzzle. Because in the jigsaw puzzle you had to combine visual elements. And uh, you can see, look upon pictures taken of the same, for, for example, a panoramic view made up of several pictures as part of a puzzle. 
So we decided to, or we selected photos that had some overlap so that you can see, or uh, through analysis, identify the relationship and the order between the, the, the photos. So then two game elements were borrowed from, not from computer games, but from analog games. So the application that we developed first as a prototype and is now uh, uh, published on, uh, on, the, on the App Store has three levels. It's first a photo positioning puzzle where I had to find the orientation and the position of each photo. And then it's a reconstruction as a kind of reward that you get the full reconstruction of the square the way it, the, uh, the way it looked in the 1930s according to the photographs. And you could also pause this reconstruction or simulation because it has animations and then you access an information layer so that you can, using spatially distributed hypertext links, you can ac access background information about uh, different buildings, about events, and so on. I'll get back to the Nalva prototype at the end and uh, just say a little bit about uh, the Kava prototype, which uh, turned out to be much more difficult. Because with the Nalva prototype, we use the still images to create a static environment. Although we had some animations, these were secondary to uh, the architecture and the static buildings. With the COPPA prototype, uh, we, they are, that's 10 photographs taken in the time frame of maybe 10 or 15 minutes in the morning uh, during the attack on Omaha Beach. It's a, extremely chaotic scene. It's in the middle of war. It's an historical event. It's very, very different from uh, the town hall square in Narva during peacetime. Um, so we have been working. And the reason why we chose this, uh, the Kappa images was, of course, to try to recreate, use the pictures to recreate an historical event and not just a historical square. But we had already published and worked for many years on uh, an AR application based on the first hour of the attack in the morning on D-Day. So then we had a lot of material already built and we could just create a small scene inside this application. And luckily we managed to do was allowed to do this despite the fact that Normandy is not in the Baltic Sea region. But we based, based uh, this, uh, this uh, application here on the vast material of documentation from artistic drawings uh, on location, uh, photo, photographers li like Kappa and others, John Ford, the Hollywood director, had five cameramen working on the beach that day uh, under his guidance. Uh, so this was an extremely well-documented uh, event. Uh, Ernest Hemingway was there writing a very fascinating story about, about the landing. But this also meant that we needed to really understand Kappa's image. And this is the, the pictures that he took. And they, as you can see, they are quite, quite uh, uh, well, it's, it, it, they weren't taken under ideal conditions for a photographer, that's obvious. So we tr have been trying to recreate this space that these images were taken in, and then we'll try to recreate the activity that's going on between these images, because they are still and we want to see uh, the action that really is taking place here. And that, then we needed to do a lot of analysis, much more than we did with uh, the Narva prototype. We used aerial photographies and tried to identify parts of the terrain and work with the angles, trying to find the point where uh, Kappa was standing. For, for most of his uh, photograph, and that got us uh, some uh, to almost to the uh, right uh, position, but it didn't help in positioning the elements that's inside 
the photos, the obstacles on the beach, uh, uh, the, the Sherman tanks, uh, the soldiers, and so on. Much more difficult. It's not easy to reconstruct a 3D space from 2D photos. So here are examples that uh, our colleagues in, uh, in, um, at Tagojoy in Vilnius have been working on for days and nights, trying to make these pictures match because Kappa is moving around, so his images are overlapping and taken from uh, the opposite direction and so on. So here we're trying to see how, is that, how far away is that obstacle and seen from the other picture, does it match again, and so on. And this created a pattern from a top-down view. And to the right here, you can see a little cut from a large aerial photograph, photograph that was taken by, the, uh, by the, the Americans two days before D-Day. And the small dots here are obstacles, and it's, it's so much overlap between the way we have positioned the obstacles based on Kappa's images that it's possible to identify his exact position based on the, the photo that's been taken two days before. Back to Narva again, because that's uh, the prototype that uh, really works as a demo. Here's a short uh, video introducing, two minute video introducing the application. And while it's running, I will, um, so now you can op turn on the sound. For the, for, for the video. This oh, okay. This is on location. A solution to this challenge was to explore the affinities between re-photography with now and then images, playing the hide and seek game hot and cold, as well as combining visual elements like in the jigsaw puzzle. The activity of finding the photographer's position based on real-time guiding and feedback was borrowed from the hot and cold game. A 3D model of the building depicted in the photo becomes more distinct as one gets closer to the vantage point. The practice of analyzing and conjoining visual elements was adapted from the relationship between pieces in a jigsaw puzzle to the overlaps between the historical photos of the town hall square. Zones were used to provide guiding feedback for how to locate the vantage point. Users also need to pay special attention to the shared parts of overlapping and connected photos. When all the positions are found, the full 3D environment turns into color and the old town comes to life. The reconstructed Barog Square can then be experienced against today's backdrop of Soviet apartment buildings. When pausing the sequence, one can activate the spatial hypertext links and access background information about the historical square. And if there is time, I will give you a very quick demo. So you better can see the dynamics of how the hot and cold game has been adapted to this environment. I now select the first uh, image where I will get some guidance. You can see, and it's important to say now that uh, the town hall square is the only common material feature between the reconstruction or between the 30s and today. So that, that is the main reference point. So that's why we start with that, uh, uh, with that reconstruction. So now, the arrow says that I need to go to, mm -hmm. sorry, a little more to the left. And you can see that the building gets, ah, I found the position. 
So now I look at the images down here, and I can see that there's, uh, on the left side there's something that's similar to the, to the town hall that could be a part of the town hall. So when I then move up, I can see that this building is materializing, and, but I need to get the, the right angle. Yes. And then I can see the curved entrance there, which seems to fit with this image. So if I move further down, maybe I'm lucky. Yes. That's the right one. I have to move. So obviously, I, I'm now overriding the GPS information just by using uh, a demo feature here. So I see those, that corner with Vana Aptek, which I can see again in that pictures. So yes, that's, uh, I'm within the, the main area that you saw in, in, the, in the round dots, but I had to search for the vantage point, which I found now. And then I see the, that sort of rounded corner there, which is again showing up in this image. So I need to go closer to that tower, which I can now see. Too far away. Da. Wrong uh, angle. And then there's only one left. And then the square turns into color so that we can depart from the black and white of the, uh, of the photos. And we will see some animation as we walk around on the square. Some people walking, some cars driving, and so on. And there's sound too, but I, it doesn't seem to, to go well through the HDMI cable. If I now touch the screen, the animation is paused, a feature that we borrowed from uh, the Omaha Beach uh, application. Uh, and then I can walk up to this hypertext link, and there's some voiceover here which shows an obelisk that used to stand here. Or I can walk up destruction, Battle of Narva, and read about another historical um, historic event that's important to, to, to this town. And there are links in these PDF documents that will take you to more specialized information on the web. But I don't think this is connected now, so I won't use it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very interesting talk and demonstration, uh, Gunnar. Uh, now we have opportunity for some questions, if anyone has a question for him. I can't see anybody. Okay, that's great, because I have a question. <laughs> uh, so what um, uh, about uh, the, the Omar Beach uh, uh, simulation and versus the the Narva simulation, you're kind of from a historical point of view, from a sort of postmodern historical point of view, where fidelity is not necessarily the most important thing. Do you think that there would be a case where there would be conflicting information? Obviously, the photographic representation is difficult to conflict with, but in terms of like the historical account or something like this, where you would have two contradictory historical accounts, what would you do in those circumstances? Could you integrate both lines into the scenario, or would you try and choose one over the other? That's uh, something we have been working on in a slightly different context. For instance, based on the archaeological evidence and the archaeological interpretations, with, which often differ mm. in a similar way. Uh, in, and in some cases, uh, for example, for the uh, Augustus Forum we did as a, as a prototype in Rome, there are 
different theories about the size and the shape of the square, of the forum itself in front of the temple. And uh, in that case, we, we uh, dis created both so that you can see, uh, see both alternatives and see how then relate the arguments to each alternative. Okay. So that's, uh, there's no limitation in the technology or the means for design here. It's a question of uh, editorial uh, will, okay. knowledge, and interest. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. okay.